Love for animals knows no bounds, least of all for this curious wrestler. That goes to the impossible to see all the animals happy. Masked professional wrestler Jinzo Shibata battles his wrestling rival Macadamian Ogre, professionally known as MAO, for the world champion title, but plans to retire right after to open a pet shop. In the heat of their final showdown, Jinzo and his pet dog, Hiroyuki, vanish and suddenly appear in a fantasy world after being summoned by Princess Altina Elgardrithes, who asks him to become a hero and help defeat the demon lord by killing the evil beasts plaguing the kingdom. Jinzo, an animal lover, refuses by performing a German suplex on the princess, knocking her out and humiliating her before fleeing. On the city streets, due to his pro wrestler attire, Jinzo is mistaken for a pervert, forcing him to flee and hide. As Jinzo sits with Hiroyuki in an alley planning their next move, criminal siblings Misha and Wolfgang plot to capture and sell Jinzo as a slave, and his dog too, since such an animal doesn't exist in this magical world. Obsessed with animals, Jinzo overpowers Wolfgang just to pet him, much to his sister's horror who thinks the wolf is being attacked. Edgar, another nearby criminal, plans to enslave a wolf girl named Shigir, so Jinzo defeats Edgar with another German suplex and rescues Shigir, who explains she owed Edgar money and offered herself as a slave to settle the debt. At his hideout, Edgar plots to steal Jinzo's dog, Hiroyuki, for revenge, but Misha foresees that the stranger might bring trouble. Shigir takes Jinzo to the Hunter's Guild to earn money through job requests. The Guild Master, while talking to Jinzo, assumes the wrestler is a perverted lunatic when the young man expresses his love for animals. However, a group of warriors asks for help, as a pack of wild animals is attacking travelers, so the guild master sends Jinzo to defeat them. On the battlefield, Jinzo refuses to use weapons against the animals due to his fondness for them, but his action is mistaken for bravery by the other warriors. Upon arrival, he discovers his targets are dangerous Cerberuses, three-headed wild dogs, but instead of fighting, Jinzo tames the entire pack, earning the nickname Beast Killer from the impressed warriors. Back at the tavern, in slightly more discreet clothing, Jinzo decides that, instead of killing the evil beasts, he'll capture and sell them as pets. Shigir, obsessed with money, decides to join him in running his pet shop, along with a giant ant beast that Jinzo seems to have befriended out of nowhere. Jinzo lays out his plan to Shigir, capture beasts and sell them to people to strengthen the bonds between beasts and humans. Shigir gets that the plan means collecting rewards for the beasts and then selling them, implying double profit, so the two decide to partner up despite having different goals. Jinzo and Shigir need money to buy a shop to sell beasts in, plus Shigir still owes Edgar money. Jinzo hears another hunter calling him Beast Killer and sends him through a wall, hating the nickname. Jinzo decides to catch a fire-breathing salamander, and he Hayes, the strongest warrior in the guild, asks him to join his team, However, Jinzo knocks him out upon learning they plan to kill the salamander. Before leaving, Shigir finds he Hayes's valuable sword to sell, which had fallen when he was knocked out by the wrestler. Jinzo easily adds the salamander to his beast collection and collects the reward, and when the paymaster congratulates him for living up to his beast killer nickname, Jinzo hits him too. Shigir pays off her debt to Edgar while a traumatized Wolfgang remains terrified of Jinzo. Elsewhere, the noble half-human slash half-dragon girl, Linda Brea Fafner Gildmarek, gets bored of beast meat and runs away to try other foods. Jinzo keeps growing his beast collection, making getting his shop more urgent, and accepts a lucrative job to deal with orcs stealing crops, though with no animals involved, Jinzo shows little enthusiasm for the mission, unlike Shigir who only sees the payout. As the two heroes leave the guild, rumors start spreading as the rest of the warriors begin to respect our heroes gradually. Lindabria's vampire maid, Carmilla Van Stein, learns that Linda Brea has disappeared. Jinzo travels to the orc fortress and challenges their king. After an evenly matched fight, Jinzo wins using his signature German suplex, earning the king's respect, who promises to keep his orcs away from humans in the future. The guild master is impressed with the wrestler's success where others failed, and congratulates him, saying his beast killer fame is well deserved, which infuriates Jinzo again. With the reward money, Jinzo buys a shop but fails to secure the bank loan needed to start it as a business. Meanwhile, the dragon girl Linda Brea appears in the city. Down the city streets, a creature of the night attacks an unsuspecting soldier. Jinzo starts prepping the opening of his pet store with Shigir and his friend the ant, 
but hits a snag when he realizes feeding the pets is impossibly expensive without the bank loan. Shigure heads to the guild offices to scout for well-paying jobs while Jinzo takes on the task of cleaning and feeding the animals. Jinzo finds Linda Brea asleep in his garden and is forced to feed her to prevent her from trying to eat his dog, Hiroyuki. He explains the concept of a pet store to Linda Brea, and the young dragoness is intrigued but has to leave. As she departs, Shigure returns and smells the scent of a dragon, prompting him to ask Jinzo if he caught one. Jinzo recounts his encounter, explaining it's impossible to feed it, but the fighter tells him everything. At the guild offices, Jinzo hears a rumor about a dragon attacking people and decides to capture it. Heat Haze appears again, eager to team up with the fighter and excited to try out his new dragon slaying sword, which infuriates Jinzo, leading to another scuffle. Shigir steals Heat Haze's new sword, claiming to have found it on the ground. This act earns them respect, but they're still labeled as beast killers. Jinzo dons his fighter attire and sets a trap, accidentally catching Linda Brea. However, they're discovered by hunters who assume he's a masked pervert kidnapping a girl. Jinzo and Linda Brea flee, and to hide, he gives one of his masks to the dragoness, reasoning that villagers are looking for a single masked fighter, not a duo. Jinzo's fighting prowess proves superior as he defeats Carmilla before they escape. In the shop, Linda Brea explains her noble family's allegiance to the Demon King, worrying Shigure, but Jinzo, ignorant of the implications, isn't concerned. Carmilla reappears but doesn't recognize Jinzo without his mask. Following Shigure's advice, Jinzo neutralizes Carmilla with holy water and garlic while Linda Brea explains her food-based rationale for fleeing. After she asks to stay, Jinzo hires her to work at the store, giving her the nickname Hanako for simplicity. When Jinzo discovers that the dragon attacking people was actually Carmilla feeding on blood, he delivers a German suplex as punishment. Princess Altina, who summoned Jinzo, is furious because, thanks to the fighter, her subjects don't respect her. Shigir despairs as all the store's money is spent on Hanako's food, Carmilla's alcohol, and pet food. Despite her ambitious nature, the young woman believes in Jinzo's dream, one she thinks is worth the effort, so she reluctantly continues by his side. The chaos in the house is such that she must assume the role of an adult and demands her companions to bring in some money, but none pay much attention. When our heroes receive a visit from a bank representative informing them that their loan will be denied unless they can provide the down payment, Jinzo forces everyone to make money no matter what, though he ends up annoying Shigure when his antics cost more than they earn, leaving them worse off financially than when they started. After Shigure seeks help from the guild master, Jinzo is sent to hunt a griffin and once again knocks out Heihaze for planning to kill the griffin, while Shigure once again finds Durendal, Heihaze's sacred sword. Jinzo learns that griffin parents force their offspring to fight, raising only the strongest to adulthood and abandoning the weakest to die. The group witnesses one of the fights, and Jinzo steals the weakest one to become its new father. The griffins chase the group and soon surround them, devouring Carmilla. Jinzo entrusts Shigure to flee with the young one while he stays to fight, but he prefers to caress the creatures and is quickly knocked out. With Jinzo knocked out, Hanako decides to fight the delicious griffins. Back at home, Shigure welcomes our heroes, a knocked out Jinzo, Carmilla's head, and Hanako carrying them all. Carmilla, killed and devoured by one of the adults, is buried in Jinzo's garden to resurrect. The baby griffin grows rapidly to adult size, increasing their pet food bill, though Shigure is less worried than usual since she recently made a small fortune selling all of Heihaze's lost swords. Returning to the beginning of our story, we get to know a bit about Macadamia Ogre, professionally known as MAO, who spent his entire wrestling career always losing against Jinzo. During what was supposed to be his big victory, our protagonist disappears into thin air mid-jump. MAO becomes furious because their rivalry remains unresolved, spirals into a depressive state, and refuses to fight anyone other than Jinzo. Back in our story, Shigure forces Jinzo to take on a new job, so Misha and Wolfgang take advantage of his absence to finally steal his dog, Hiroyuki. Later, Edgar finds Misha and Wolfgang beaten up as their attempt to steal Hiroyuki was thwarted by Jinzo's ant friend, leading Wolfgang with phobias of both Jinzo and ants. Jinzo loses interest in the hunt after discovering their targets are plant-based mandrakes, and the hunt completely fails when Jinzo gets distracted fighting with Carmilla and Hanako eats all the mandrakes. Back at home, Jinzo learns that Hiroyuki was almost stolen, and the ant friend creates identity of the thieves, 
showcasing another talent of the series' most interesting character, prompting Jinzo to punish Wolfgang with his wrestling techniques in the middle of the street, impressing nearby citizens. Their applause makes Jinzo nostalgic for his previous battles against MAO. Meanwhile, in the real world, MAO is unable to overcome his obsession with Jinzo, convinced that his rival fled to avoid the humiliation of defeat. However, he is suddenly summoned to the same fantasy world by Joanna, the vampire princess, who received permission from the Demon King to summon another Demon King from the alternate world to defeat the hero summoned by Princess Altina. When the princess asks for his name, the fighter introduces himself as MAO, which means Demon King in Japanese, leading the princess to believe he is a real demon. Based on his wrestling name, MAO, Joanna and her court mistakenly confirm that MAO is a true Demon King from an alternate world, so they are very pleased with their champion choice. The demons show the fighter a photo of his enemy, and MAO is ecstatic to discover that the hero they want him to defeat is Jinzo, which greatly pleases Joanna. While getting a manicure, Joanna is glad that the two champions know each other, as this will help the princess achieve her goal of defeating Hanako, with whom she has had a long-standing childhood rivalry. It all started when a young Hanako defeated Joanna in combat, leading the princess to become obsessed with the dragoness, who cares for nothing more than eating but still managed to defeat her in battle. Years later, Joanna tries to replace Carmilla with a vampire servant under her control, gaining an advantage over Hanako. She made her servant, Rose, a vampire lord, defeat and humiliate Carmilla, famous for her incompetence, to prove that she was unworthy of serving Hanako. Rose effortlessly defeats Carmilla, but instead of firing her, Hanako asks to keep her, kneeling before her enemy, which Joanna accepts before leaving proudly. On the carriage ride back home, Joanna and Rose mock their pathetic opponent, when suddenly the vehicle stops. The two women get off the carriage only to find a smiling Hanako standing in the middle of the road. Hanako explains that although Carmilla is useless, she's her useless one whom she's grown fond of. She also can't allow the family name to be tarnished with that humiliation, so she transforms into a dragon, terrifying her enemies. After hearing how Hanako fled, Joanna is convinced that Hanako wants to find and defeat the hero to gain glory, which is why she summoned MAO to defeat the hero first. When Joanna's armorer offers MAO a choice of weapon, he refuses, as it goes against the rules. Meanwhile, Hanako fondly remembers Carmilla's uselessness while watching Jinzo bury her in the garden to resurrect after being killed and eaten by another beast, recalling that the vampire's greatest quality is her loyalty. While this happens, a blue-haired girl secretly observes Jinzo. The blue-haired girl, a hunter named Seals, approaches Jinzo and is instantly reprimanded for calling him Beast Killer. Seals explains that she's an inexperienced hunter and that the guild master suggested she ask Jinzo to train her. Jinzo refuses to train the young woman but changes his mind upon realizing that Seals is a lizard man with scales on her back and stomach. Seals begins her training, although Jinzo's enthusiasm wavers depending on how much of her scaly body he can see. Shigure, Carmilla, and Hanako also try to help, each according to their specialty. Shigure trains Seals in the use of her legs and speed, Hanako in the art of fighting and eating, and the incompetent Carmilla teaches her fighting poses. Seals completes the training and is ready to become a professional fighter, but she reveals that wasn't her goal. Seals reveals she wanted training specifically from Jinzo because the guild hunters mocked her for being a lizard man. This triggers Jinzo's uncontrolled rage, and he violently storms into the guild building. Jinzo furiously beats the hunters while Seals is inspired by Jinzo to become a better person. The hunters realize their mistake and apologize, and Jinzo helps them all move past it by insisting Seals duels one of the hunters, even though the young woman had already accepted the apologies. Knowing our hero, the group agrees that the only way to calm him is to have the blessed duel, so Seals battles one of the warriors. Seals wins with a perfect German suplex, despite Carmilla's bad advice. Meanwhile, the bank representative asks what's going on, to which the guild leader explains it's a staged fight. The hunters explain they were being mean out of frustration because a new beast has been beating them up and stealing all the beasts, making it hard to make money. This beast, who may or may not be a shirtless tiger man, attacks the hunters with strange techniques and escapes with the prey while wearing a cloak. Shigure and the others realize it was actually Jinzo in his animal mask wrestling costume and that the whole situation is largely his fault. 
When Shigure asks where the wrestler got so many creatures, the bank representative interrupts. Klaus, the bank representative, approaches Genzo with plans to hold a wrestling tournament, with which Genzo would earn a lot of money for his store. Genzo accepts after realizing he misses wrestling. In the main square, a wrestling ring is built according to Genzo's specifications, and the wrestling show is about to begin. Genzo tries to include the beasts in the matches, but Klaus suggests Beastmen instead. Though not his first choice, our hero agrees, thinking he can still stroke their fur during the contests, much to Shigure's frustrated glance, who's starting to know him too well. Genzo spots a cobalt he always flirts with and decides to ask her husband to participate. The husband, thinking Genzo wants to steal his wife, fights against him. Even though he loses, he reminisces about his youth as a warrior and regains his desire to fight, so he leaves with the wrestler. The cobalt wife is upset and confused because Genzo seems to have stolen her husband, and Shigure doesn't understand what just happened. Genzo tries to ask Wolfgang, but he remains traumatized. Angry at the wrestler for traumatizing his brother, Misha decides to participate instead. Genzo also recruits orcs and hunters, though he knocks out Hihei's for trying to use weapons, and his new legendary spear, Gibold, is found by Shigure. As preparations continue, a hooded figure watches the tournament from a distance. In the kingdom's castle, Princess Altina learns about the tournament and recognizes Genzo on the posters. In the square, Shigure and Klaus organize sales booths to capitalize on the event, with great success. As the matches begin, they are hugely popular, even though Genzo laments the lack of drama, as each fight adapts to the wrestler's styles, who don't understand the rules too well. Misha prepares to avenge his brother, and Genzo gets ready to return to the ring. Genzo and Carmilla form a tag team against Misha and Hihei's, and although the fight starts with Misha and Hihei's having the advantage, mainly because Genzo and Carmilla are busy fighting each other, they soon turn the tables and take the lead. The hooded figure watches as Misha is being defeated, saddened by not being able to avenge his brother, and approaches, revealing himself as Wolfgang. The crowd gets excited, and as rules are being made up on the fly, Klaus authorizes Wolfgang to replace He Hayes and fight alongside his sister. As the crowd goes wild, Shigure admits that the rivalry drama between Wolfgang and Genzo is good entertainment. Wolfgang disagrees as he's bothered by Genzo for 17 minutes and 26 seconds. After the matches, at the Adventurer's Guild Bar, Genzo declares the tournament a success as humans and beastmen start getting along. Seeing humans and beasts celebrating in the same place, Shigure becomes happy and agrees. However, her joy doesn't last long, as Shigure loses her temper after all the tournament's profits have to be spent on Genzo's damages, Carmilla's alcohol, and Hanako's food. Genzo forces Carmilla to walk his dog Hiroyuki, reminding her that in this world he is a unique and valuable animal. Meanwhile, Edgar spies on them with the intention of stealing the dog, noticing that the castle soldiers are surrounding the area. After the soldiers locate Genzo, Princess Altina tries to retrieve him, but he performs a German suplex on her, humiliating her once again. Joanna informs MAO of Genzo's exaggerated achievements, such as defeating a whole pack of griffins and destroying an orc fortress. MAO defeats the beast bandits using his wrestling moves, intriguing Joanna, but he responds strangely to a dog-like beast similar to Hiroyuki but blue in color. Altina reveals that Genzo is the hero who must defeat the Demon King. Genzo decides not to do it, reasoning that a Beast King can't be all that bad. As a hero can't be summoned until the previous one dies, Altina orders her knights to kill Genzo to summon a new hero, but Genzo defeats them and then punishes Altina. In the desert, Joanna gives MAO control of her Beastman army. Altina tries multiple times to convince Genzo to be the hero but is punished each time. Genzo begins to think that if the Demon King is some kind of super animal, it might be worth getting to know him. He goes to the guild for information, and he Hayes tries to join them but is knocked out once again for calling Genzo Beast Killer while Shigure finds his latest sword, the cursed Katana Muramesa. The other hunters mistakenly believe that Genzo plans to kill the Demon King on his own and start calling him hero. Back home, Hanako worries that if Genzo is the hero, he might cause trouble since her family serves the Demon King. Carmilla assures her she'll handle it and tries to scare Genzo by describing the Demon King as a beast formed from parts of other monstrous creatures, unaware that this excites the wrestler instead of scaring him. 
Altina arrives to inform Jinzo that another demon king has been summoned, but he punishes her anyway, more out of habit than anything else. Imeo goes to the orc fortress and begins to beat them to find out where Jinzo is. Later, Jinzo goes to visit the orcs, only to discover that his village has been attacked by the new demon king. The orcs show Jinzo a drawing of Imeo, explaining that he is the new demon king, and Jinzo recognizes him instantly, which depresses me a bit because even the orcs draw better than me. As everyone goes to sleep, three familiar silhouettes kidnap Hiroyuki. Princess Altina once again tries to ask Jinzo to at least protect the citizens if the Demon King attacks, but Jinzo isn't interested and decides he'd rather take Hiroyuki for a walk. However, Jinzo discovers with horror that Hiroyuki has disappeared. Imeo sees one of Jinzo's tournament posters and thus figures out where his rival is hiding. While Jinzo and all his friends search for the little dog, Klaus arrives and reveals that Hiroyuki is in a nobleman's mansion. The nobleman reveals that he bought Hiroyuki for his daughter, who now calls the dog Catherine and refuses to return him. Altina returns to the castle for money, believing that if she buys Hiroyuki again, Jinzo will be in debt to her and will have to become the hero. Jinzo retires, knowing he doesn't have the money to get his dog back, but on his way, he breaks down in tears. When the nobleman's daughter sees Jinzo crying, she offers to return Hiroyuki, so the nobleman kindly agrees to sell him back at a reduced price. However, Jinzo still doesn't have that amount, so sadly begins to accept that he will never get his pet back, thinking that deep down, Hiroyuki is in a better home. With no other option, Shigure pays for the dog with her secret savings, earning Jinzo's gratitude. Jinzo learns that it was Misha, Wolfgang, and Edgar who stole Hiroyuki, so he punishes them violently. Altina arrives with a huge pile of money but finds that everyone has already left. Upon returning home, Jinzo finds Joanna, Rose, and Mao in the living room. Rose, Carmilla, Joanna, and Hanako resume their petty arguments until Mao angrily interrupts and challenges Jinzo to finish their match. Assuming Mao means a fight to the death, Joanna also challenges Hanako. Klaus appears out of nowhere and suggests including their fights in the next tournament, and everyone agrees. While Jinzo trains for his fight, Carmilla sets aside her pride and secretly asks Jinzo to train her in wrestling so she can finally defeat Rose. Jinzo begins Carmilla's training but isn't sure what to teach her exactly, as he knows nothing about her motivations or her opponent. Additionally, Hanako doesn't allow the vampire to reveal that both she and her mistress work for the Demon King. Klaus and Shigir redesign the wrestling ring to accommodate a larger audience, adding VIP areas and more food stalls. Jinzo manages to plan a tournament of five matches, including Misha, Wolfgang, and even Princess Altina, with the final match being Jinzo against Mao. Preparations continue, all fighters train hard, and the event becomes a massive success with sold-out seats. In the first match, Heat Haze, Seals, and Altina fight against demon beasts from Joanna's army, and although they emerge victorious, Altina discovers that public humiliation is quite enjoyable as long as her face is hidden by her mask. In the second round, the Cobalt Husband and the Orc King defeat Joanna's Cyclopes. In the third match, Misha and Wolfgang are crushed by Joanna's Gorilla Beasts without putting up much of a fight. With the score 2-1, it's time for the fourth match, Carmilla faces off against Rose and discovers that Jinzo's training has made her stronger. She manages to toss Rose with one of Jinzo's moves. Unfortunately, Carmilla celebrates too soon, and Rose knocks her out with a German suplex, defeating her once again, declaring that she still has a long way to go to defeat her. Despite that, Jinzo admits it was a good fight, and Hanako congratulates Carmilla for fighting for her own pride. In reward, she offers her some food, which brings the vampire to tears. Now, with the score tied, things get exciting as Jinzo prepares to face Mao in the final. The show goes on and Jinzo's team celebrates their victories, with the princess now wearing her humiliation with pride, the cobalt reigniting the flames of love, all thanks to wrestling. Joanna is dead certain MAO will beat the hero and can't wait to rub it in her rival's face. However, Hanako warns Joanna that the fight between Jinzo and MAO might not go as she thinks. The match kicks off and MAO starts recalling his past defeats, prepping a foolproof plan against Kinzo. But all that pondering gives his opponent the upper hand, and when he snaps out of it, Mao finds himself trapped by Jinzo. As they duke it out, Mao gets steamed up because he thinks Jinzo ran away. 
Amid their brutal moves, Jinzo explains he didn't run, he was transported to the magical realm. He never planned to escape because his goal was to win and open his pet store, a goal he still has today. So, in the midst of blows, the two wrestlers make amends and carry on the battle as if it were just another ordinary wrestling match. Joanna and Rose start worrying that their demon king might be a goofball. While they brawl, Emeo reveals he's got a fear of animals, so Joanna and Rose steal Hiroyuki, forcing Jinzo to leave the ring and chase them down in a rage. The fight turns into a free-for-all between the Beastmen and the Hunters, ending when Jinzo defeats Emeo with his signature German suplex. With their rematch finally over, Emeo happily accepts to fight again someday. The hero's army is declared the winner over the Demon King's army. As Joanna leaves, Hanako warns her that her job is to watch the hero, and she won't tolerate Joanna's interference. Thus, the demon and her assistant leave, promising to get their revenge sooner or later. Though the exhibition was an unprecedented success, Shigure nearly loses it when she realizes, once again, that the bills for Jinzo's damages, Hanako's food, and Carmilla's drinks have exceeded their profits. Fuming, she heads to the tavern, but ultimately lets it slide after seeing how it brought humans and beasts together, even the Demon King's army. Finally, the wolf girl manages to make some money by selling Jinzo's trophy made of rare mithril. Princess Altina awaits the next humiliating wrestling tournament as MAO leaves to continue his own training. Life returns to normal as Jinzo accepts a job to deal with a minotaur, and I want a spin-off about the ant.